Hello everybody, today I'm with the Chicago Auto Show taking a look at this 2023 GMC Sierra 1500 AT4X. Now, what makes it the AT4X is the aftermarket AEV, which is American Expedition Vehicles front bumper. I believe they also give you um, a little bit more aggressive uh, tires and I think you get a leveling kit uh, from the factory. So the AEV bumper is gonna give you increased approach angles. It's also extremely heavy duty. It is a powder coated heavy duty metal. You also retain your LED fog lights. Really nice um, molded into the bumper tow recovery hooks. I believe these things do pop out giving you access for pods if you would like. Pretty cool. You also have a metal skid plate underneath there to protect everything when you're off-roading. And you also have your DSSV Multimatic shocks under there, which you probably can't see because the lighting is not that great. But this is a sweet, sweet bumper setup. It does increase the off-road performance just a little bit in conjunction with the off-road tires. Now we have a beautiful red, I think it's like a, uh, a cherry red or a pepper red tint coat new updated LED headlights in my opinion it pretty much th this whole setup this headlight and grill combo made the refresh for me I think it's a way more aggressive looking truck than the previous um, version of this AT4X is going to be on the driver's side really nice almost like a brushed bronze looking tr uh, trim color GMC logo, massive up front, 360 degree camera system. Nowadays, it seems like every single truck is coming with it. Uh, beautiful, beautiful looking truck. On this side, we have your black plastic fender flares that transition into um, kind of minimalist style uh, mud guards. Real thick coat of paint along the bottom rocker panel to protect against uh, rock chips and then eventually corrosion. Bed lined cab length running boards. Your AT4X badge is gonna be right there. This guy does have the 6.2 liter V8 engine, indicated by the badge on the quarter panel. Black mirror caps, mirror mounted 360 degree camera, blind spot monitoring as you'd come to expect. Right here we have your um, passive entry system, so as long as you have the key fob on you, you can lock and unlock the vehicle from the driver or passenger side door. I am not a fan of chrome, so all of this being gloss black is a huge plus in my book. Again, that thick coat of paint continues to the bed. Splash guard, black rear bumper with the second generation bumper step. A lot bigger so you can fit a work boot in here. Your blind spot monitor is actually located right in there as well. LED tail lamp. Parking sensors are gonna be integrated into the middle portion of the bumper on this guy. Seven pin connector. This is your camera system. This is your in trailer camera and your back of trailer camera. Your GMC Sierra badging right there in the middle of the tailgate as well. This guy does have the multi-pro tailgate. I'll go over that a little bit later. Backup camera, LED puddle light for hooking up a trailer in low light conditions. Hard um, trifold tonneau cover. Capless fuel fill port. Right there we have your third brake light, your cargo camera, and your rear view mirror camera. This wing is designed to shoot air over the tailgate, so if you don't have a tonneau cover, you won't have as much drag as if you did have a tonneau cover. Very, very beautiful looking truck. This exterior color really pops in the light. Let's take a closer look at the interior. I do want to apologize for the lack of lighting in here. I'm trying my best to, to lighten it up. I opened all the doors and got all the lights on and stuff like that. Um, I will try and fix it in post. But starting off over here on the driver's side door, we have this real nice soft leather with this red stitching. It looks really, really cool. We also have this kind of like rubberized feeling, I don't know, like um, textured trim throughout. It feels very rugged and definitely AT4-esque. Um, Bose Premium Audio Group, your AT4X badging, all your window controls, all your mirror controls, lock and unlock buttons, two seat memory. Over here we have your uh, electronic parking brake, push button transfer case, all your drive mode dial right here with your push button trailer tow mode. This is your fog light button, cargo lamp button, dimmer switch for your instrument cluster, and then the rotary dial selector for the exterior lighting of the vehicle. Above that we have your heads up display buttons right here which brings us to the dashboard. Heads up display is gonna be right here. Uh, General Motors has pretty much the best in the business. Very bright, very easy, easily seen. Um, tons of different uh, settings you can actually display on the, 
uh, windshield, which is pretty cool. I'd say 75 to 80% of the dashboard is leather. Working our way down to the instrument cluster, it is fully digital. I will try and see if I can toggle it on for you real quick. Pretty sweet. Um, tons of different parameters you can monitor. I love that the industry is moving in that direction. Nice leather wrapped steering wheel, no bolsters, which is refreshing. Over here on the left side of the steering wheel, we have your cruise control buttons, as well as your heated steering wheel button and your gap adjustment for your adaptive cruise control. This guy does have paddle shifters. On the right side of the steering wheel, we have the steering wheel mounted audio controls for your call buttons, as well as the control pad for the center LCD display, although I cannot toggle it on completely. I love where General Motors placed the air conditioning vents on the Sierra. I wish the Silverado followed suit, but it is what it is. That brings us down to the massive 17.7 uh, horizontal touchscreen display, powered by Google, very responsive. It's got a 4G LTE connection, uh, wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You can control your climate through here. The navigation is insane. You have a trailering checklist, so if you're by yourself, you can actually check the lights and stuff on your trailer. Uh, so that way you know you're compliant. Let's see if I can go to the maps. The maps is just sweet. It's got a card system. This is just very well thought out. Very high definition as well. Physical buttons right here for the radio. Underneath that, you've got your push button start. Dual zone climate control, heated and ventilated captain shares. Something that I love that General Motors does is they give you to turn on the heated seat back independent from the seat itself. So if you uh, your butt is warm or you just had a very long day at work uh, and your back is kind of sore, turn that heated seat back on and you're good to go. Under that, we have a uh, bank of buttons over here. Starting from left to right, we have your lane keep assist button, parallel or parking sensor button, automatic start stop button. It is on by default. This button will actually lower the tailgate, hazard light button, traction control off, hill descent control. This is your rear locker and this is both lockers. So in conjunction with the bumper, the DSSV shocks, and the off-road tires, you have a real, you have both a, a front and a rear locker in here, which is sweet. Decent sized storage tray, USB-C, USB outlet right here, two cup holders, little storage tray here, a minimalist style shifter. I'm not a huge fan of this kind of shifter, however, um, this one is okay. It's, it, you don't actually have to go back and forth, it's just spring-loaded, so push it forward, go, pull it back, you're good. It's actually very, it's very cool. And then we have a uh, integrated trailer brake control right here, which I thought was weird at first, but the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Uh, typically, you know, I drive with my left hand on the steering wheel, and then I have my right hand just laying on the armrest. Um, it seems like every time they refresh a truck, they move it somewhere. It used to be here, then it was up here, then it was down here, then it was over here. Um, this just seems to be a perfect spot for it. That way, if it was over here, taking your left hand off the wheel, you have to switch to your right hand. This way, you can keep your left hand on the wheel and just move your hand down and you know change the gain or, or brake if you need to. Pretty cool. Over here, we have a wireless charging mat, which brings us to the uh, removable storage tray system. We have uh, tabs for file folders if you're using this as a work vehicle or a business write-off, section 179, put all your receipts and crap in there. USB-C, USB power outlet right here. This goes right back in, handy dandy. Here's a quick look at the AT4X leather seats in this vehicle. I like the red and white stitching and piping. This guy has two glove boxes. The first one is accessed by pushing this button right here. Second one is gonna be right here. Now I always get it confused. Uh, suede, Alcantara, I use them interchangeably. Uh, I always switch them up. It's got, it's got one of those. It's got either Suede or Alcantara on the, on the headliner. Um, LED, duh, LED uh, lit vanity for the passenger as well as your driver. Up top on the headliner, you have a three-door universal garage remote. You've got a, in the center right here, you have a power switch for the power sliding rear window flanked by the single pane sunroof, which I love the single pane sunroof. I'll go over that in a second. LED dome map lights, video camera rear view mirror. Right now it would be a regular rear view mirror. Flick it forward like you would if you uh, are trying to get rid of glare on a old style mirror. It turns into the camera view. These buttons right here control different things such as how bright the display is, how high or how low the camera views on the screen, 
or how zoomed in or zoomed out the camera is itself. Once you're done using it as a camera, flick it back and it becomes a rear view mirror again. Now, I love the single pane sunroof. Uh, I don't, I do not like dual panes, especially for trucks. I feel like it makes the truck less rigid. Um, it is your number one source of heat loss in the winter and your number source, number one source of heat gain in the summer. It makes your air conditioning and heater work harder than it has to. And I just, it, it doesn't look good in my opinion and you lose a lot of headroom. Now with the single pane, I'm about 5'11". I don't have to worry about my head hitting the top, but it's even more so, it's even better in the back. I'll show you that in a little bit, but love, love, love the single pane sunroof. Um, the refresh in 2023 for the 1500s was much needed. Uh, you know, now they are way more competitive with the competition. Uh, I love how this feels like a cockpit. It is slightly angled towards the driver. Uh, with how big these touchscreens are getting, uh, you know, if it wasn't angled, I'd have to reach like all the way over here and get out, almost out of my seat to touch one of the buttons. But when I'm planted in my seat, I don't even have to really lean forward. I can touch the right hand top corner without any issue at all. Um, I like that all this is angled towards the driver as well. If the passenger needs to adjust something, it's these are the first buttons they need to adjust. They don't really need to touch anything else in here anyway. Um, overall, very impressed with the interior on this truck. It did a heck of a job. Let's take a look at the back and see how much legroom we have. So before I get in, I do want to point out we have almost a load flat floor. There is a little bit of a, uh, a hump right here for the transmission and the drive line. These seats do fold up, giving us access to some under seat storage. We have in seat storage on both driver and passenger side as well. Storage in the form of pouches behind both driver and passenger seats. Some cup holders heated captain's chairs, USB, USB type C outlet. Right here we have a fold down armrest slash cup holder. And again, because there is no twin pane sunroof, I don't know, I'll have to fix, I'll take a look at this in post and lighten it up, but you have about three and a half to four and a half inches more of headroom back here. So like I said, I'm about 5'11". I have about three to four more inches of headroom before my head hits the top. They push this as high as they can towards the roof of the cab. LED dome map light up top, integrated hanger hooks right here. Overall, very comfortable. And again, I feel like I'm in a movie theater back here with that touchscreen and the visibility out of the windshield. Let's take a quick look at the bed. There's gonna be a couple ways to actually lower the tailgate on this vehicle. The first way is with the button underneath the dual zone climate control. Second way is with the key fob. And the third way is the more traditional way. I say traditional because most vehicles nowadays are um, shying away from the actual uh, mechanical latch and going to just a push button. Now, those first two, with the button underneath the dual zone climate control and the key fob, will only open this as a conventional tailgate. So for example, it'll only open it like that. If you wanna use it as a multi-pro tailgate, you have to come back here and do it yourself. Now I'm gonna open up the first portion. So it turns your, what would be a five and a half or six and a half foot bed into either a six and a half, seven foot bed or an eight foot bed. Pretty cool, put that up. You also get more tie down points here as well as over here. Now, if you wanna use it as a step, you push both of them simultaneously. It'll unlock both of them. You can then flip this down, use it as a step. This guy does have the kicker audio um, tailgate pack. You have a USB and auxiliary jack right there, as well as all your volume controls. This thing is absolutely sweet. Now, because there is a tonneau cover on it, I'm not gonna mess it up. Grab the grab handle, it locks into place. You can get up and into the bed very easily. Now. I know that this guy has a power outlet. I believe it's a 120 uh, volt, 400 watt power outlet over on the passenger side right here. It also has LED bed lighting, which I will try to turn on if I can find the button, but I'm not sure it's back here. Uh, it also has three tie down points in each of the four corners for a class leading 12 tie down points, which is pretty sweet. Also, they push the outermost portion of the bed out on both sides to maximize cargo space. And I believe they are also are class leading in terms of bed cargo volume. So when you're done back here, simply reverse the process, put it up one handed. Now it is a little bit heavier because there is all that, you know, mechanical stuff in there and stuff like that, but it's still doable with one hand. 
Let's take a quick look at the towing and payload sticker. So here's the towing and payload sticker for this vehicle. Keep in mind this one is a little bit more off-road focused and if you see one on your local dealer lot that's a little bit different than this, it could be because of how it's optioned. Typically the more options and packages you have, the less towing and payload you'll get. Fortunately, this vehicle is not priced at the show and it does not have a window sticker, so I can't really give that information to you guys. I do apologize for that. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving me a like and share. And if you wanna keep up to date with more auto show content and future vehicle walkthroughs, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and be sure to check out all the affiliate links in the description below. Like always, thanks for watching and have a great day.